Tonight, Troy University plays host to a leadership conference celebrating Black History Month. Plus, a former commander in the Air Force ROTC takes on a new role. Stay tuned. Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News starts now. From the High Definition Digital Production Center on the Troy campus, with news from Troy University locations around the world, this is Troy Trojan Vision Nightly News. Hello and welcome to Troy Children Vision Nightly News for February 3rd, 2012. I'm Christina Cook. And I'm Courtney Steele. Thank you for joining us this evening. Troy University's annual leadership conference celebrating back black history kicks off tonight with a keynote address from the winner of a popular television show, The Apprentice. Randall Pinkett was the winner of season four in the Donald Trump hosted show. Pinkett will be one of two guest speakers for the two day conference. Pinkett would speak at the opening ceremony and organizers feel he would be an exciting way to open the conference. And Dr. Pinkett, many people will know him through being the fourth winner of The Apprentice, okay. uh, NBC's uh, <laughs> television show. And he is the president of BCT Enterprises and is a well-known speaker and obviously um, a very dynamic person to be able to win The Apprentice. Mm -hmm. Pinkett will speak at the opening ceremony tonight at 6.30 in the Children's Center Theater. Registration for the conference is $30 for the general public and $15 for students. If it seems like the members of the Sound of the South are looking a little younger this week, you aren't necessarily imagining things. A slightly younger crop of musicians are on campus this week to improve their musical skills. Felicia Payne has the story. Campus has been invaded by over 400 high school students this week with the Southeastern United States Band Clinic. Sue started on Thursday morning with auditions and then students have been going non-stop, playing music and learning as they go. Effectively, the 450, I believe, students that are here uh, this weekend to play with us will affect many thousands across our entire area. We're, we're really excited about this weekend. It's the harder music gives you a better chance of learning it better and learning different stuff. It pushes you to learn stuff you may not know. The high school students have been divided into three bands. These groups have been practicing throughout campus in Crosby Theater, Long Hall, and Stewart Hall. While the participants have been busy at rehearsal, their high school band directors have had the chance to go to different clinics to learn something to take back to their classrooms from their weekend in Troy. Seuss is also helpful to students in the School of Music as they serve as aides for the bands and learn things to use when they have their own bands one day. This is one of the ways that we keep the great tradition that is the Sound of the South going. And when they have a break from rehearsal, there are concerts being put on by high school bands from surrounding areas with a concert from the Troy Symphony Band Friday night in Crosby Theater. Seuss will conclude on Saturday with concerts beginning at 5 p.m. featuring the three honor bands. Admission is free and all are invited to attend. Felicia Payne, Troy, Trojan Vision News. This is the 39th year for the Southeastern United States Concert Band Clinic. Troy University's first year students program has taken on some military leadership. That's right, Christina. The former commander of Troy's Air Force ROTC made a move to the program this year. Tiffany Lester tells us about the former commander's new role. Ivan Merritt, a retired Air Force officer and one of Troy University's leadership professors, has recently changed titles. Merritt is now the Associate Dean of First Year Studies at Troy University. He tells of what his new duties are as the Associate Dean. I'm really about moving the organization forward and accomplishing our goals and our expectations that Troy University has actually uh, postured for this program. Merritt originally came to Troy University to serve as the commander of the Air Force ROTC program and he believes that the experience he gained from his 27 years in the military has helped him be efficient in his new administrative position. I give a tremendous amount of credit for the training and the experiences that the military provided to me individually and it really set into motion the opportunities as well as the insight as to what it takes to really be not only a leader but a team member within an organization. After doing an annual review of the First Year Studies program, Merritt says that 2011 was a year that showed growth in the services that they provide and that while he can't tell of all the plans, 
He says that the organization is dedicated to making updates and improvements to benefit Troy students. We're looking for new ways to improve on those services we offer. Uh, we're looking at some of the academic courses that we are responsible for and how it's time to update and overhaul them to, to be current. And it's all about assisting students and meeting their needs. Tiffany Lester, Troy Trojan Vision News. First year studies program is designed to help students make a smooth transition from high school to college life. And now taking a look at news from around the state. Laura's from a former Alabama professor accused of killing three colleagues during a faculty meeting are asking state appeals court to delay her March trial. They say officials haven't paid for expert witnesses or testing by a neurologist for Amy Bishop. She has pleaded not guilty by reason of insanity to charges of capital murder and attempted murder. School board members in Jackson County have decided not to ban a man known as the Bible Man from holding monthly meetings with elementary school children. The Wisconsin-based Freedom From Religion Foundation had objected to the voluntary school meetings headed by Horace Turner, Jr. Birmingham police say they've charged a third teenager in the slaying of five men who were found shot to death in a house on Sunday. Authorities say 16-year-old Reginald Mills of, Mass of Bessemer has been charged with five counts of murder and robbery. And still to come on Trojan Vision Nightly News, the men's basketball team was looking to end a two-game losing streak last night. Daniel Percival will be in to let us know how the game turned out when she joins us with sports. But first, the Susan G. Coleman for the Cure Foundation is apologizing for cutting off funding from Planned Parenthood. We'll have more on that story when we come back. The Susan G. Coleman Foundation does an about face on funding for Planned Parenthood. I'm Randall Pinkston in Washington. Details coming up. At the heart of what we do in the College of Business is care for the students. We feel like the students are our most important uh, assets. I have never been anywhere where I've known so many students on first name basis. What we try to do at Troy University is provide an experience to students that not only provide the curriculum that allows them to be successful in the business world, but we also try to expand their horizons to reach greater opportunities that maybe they didn't think they were capable of before. Nice. Oops. Yeah, sure. Let's go. Moms everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. From the high definition digital production studios of Troy University, you're watching the award winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. And now for a look at what's happening across the nation and around the world, we go to Christina Cook at the Global News Desk. Christina? Thanks, Courtney. The Susan G. Coleman for the Cure Foundation reversed course Friday, deciding not to cut grants for the Planned Parenthood that helped cover the cost of breast cancer provision measures. And the charity apologizes for a decision it says casts doubt on their commitment to the mission of saving lives. Randall Pinkston reports from Washington. Susan G. Coleman Foundation reversed its decision to cut funds to Planned Parenthood after a storm of protest. Coleman's board of directors said in a statement, we want to apologize to the American public for decisions that cast doubt upon our commitment to our mission of saving women's lives. We will continue to fund existing grants, including those of Planned Parenthood. Earlier in the week, the organization defended the move. And the scurrilous accusations being hurled at this organization are profoundly hurtful. Coleman's funds to Planned Parenthood, nearly $700,000 last year, were used to fight breast cancer. But anti-abortion rights critics had long opposed funding because Planned Parenthood also provides abortions. The decision sparked a viral, mostly negative reaction on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. It also generated a flood of donations to Planned Parenthood. At last count, $3 million, more than four times Coleman's annual contribution. What we've seen um, over the last few days in the outpouring of support sends a real important message about that women are willing to stand up for women and, and, and women's health. 
Coleman officials denied they made the decision for political reasons, saying it was part of a new policy preventing grants to organizations under investigation. Planned Parenthood is currently the subject of a probe by U.S. Representative Cliff Stearns, a Republican from Florida. Officials from Planned Parenthood say they are enormously grateful that Coleman is changing its rules. Randall Pinkston, CBS News, Washington. The job market showed its most impressive gain since le early last year. Hiring surged across most major industries, pushing the unemployment rate lower for the fifth straight month. Alexis Christophorus has the story and reaction on Wall Street. The labor market showed a new burst of life in January. Employers went on a hiring spree, adding 243,000 new jobs. That pushed unemployment down to 8.3 percent, the lowest rate in three years. President Obama welcomed the news and called on Congress to keep it going by renewing the payroll tax cut. Do not slow down the recovery that we're on. Don't muck it up. Keep it moving in the right direction. Hiring was up in manufacturing and construction. The service industry, which includes retail and accounting, grew at its fastest pace in a year. People are working longer. More people are working. They're getting paid more money. I mean, so I think that you really can't argue with the fact that this is a much better number than we've seen in a long time. The job numbers were significantly better than expected, and that helped trigger a triple-digit rally here at the New York Stock Exchange. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is now at the highest level since the financial meltdown in 2008. But for nearly 13 million unemployed, the recovery isn't coming fast enough. Marcus Braswell joined the long lines at a job fair outside New York City. Somewhere on the middle of March. This father of two is getting by on odd jobs after being laid off last month. Yeah, I'm really motivated to get a job. It's, it's, no, it's no, the only goal, the goal is get a job, it's nothing else. That goal may finally be getting easier. The unemployment rate has now dropped for five months in a row. Alexis Christophorus, CBS News, Wall Street. Nevada holds its presidential caucuses tomorrow and polls indicate that Mitt Romney will win. But Newt Gingrich isn't backing down. Big Asher Band reports from Las Vegas. Mitt Romney can't ignore new evidence the economy is rebounding. We got good news this morning on job creation in January. I hope that continues. But he won't be giving any credit to President Obama. At a roundtable of struggling Nevada business leaders, Romney said the president's policies have only prolonged the suffering. But this president has not helped the process. He's heard it. But it's Newt Gingrich who's convinced he will be the one to go head-to-head -head with President Obama. Speaking at a country western bar in Las Vegas, he attacked Romney for his recent comments that he wasn't concerned about the poor because they have a safety net. If you're a genuine conservative, first of all, you don't say that you don't care about the poor. Polls show Romney has a 20-point lead here heading into Saturday's caucuses, but Gingrich is still trying to convince undecided voters he's the real conservative choice. Dick Whitmer came out to hear how the former House Speaker plans to improve the economy. The 69-year-old is facing the prospect of coming out of retirement because he just can't afford it. I, I want to know what they're going to do to solve the problem. I don't want to hear political rhetoric. Whitmer is among the 10 percent of undecided voters in Nevada who have just one day left to settle on a candidate. Begatchaban, CBS News, Las Vegas, Nevada. And that wraps things up from the Global News Desk. To see more stories from across the country and around the world, including a discovery of what scientists say are calling an extremely rare sea creature, you can tune in to Trojan Vision Global Night News right after the nightly news. Now back to you, Courtney. Thanks, Christina. And now Daniel Purse will join us with some sports. So, Danielle, I know this week the men's women's basketball team had another midweek doubleheader. Well, that's right. Both teams were in action at home against Florida International. And first up, let's get into the men's game. The Trojans posted a 5-4 record at Sartain Hall heading into Thursday night's game. Troy was looking to get back on the winning track against Florida International, but a hot start wasn't enough to get past the Panthers. The Trojans took a 12-2 lead to start the game Thursday night, but Florida International outlasted Troy and won 63-50. With seven minutes to go in the game, Justin Wright made a layup to bring the Trojans within one. But during the remainder of the game, the Trojans only managed five more points. Started the game off pretty good, and then uh, 
I guess after we got to 12 points, from that point on, we struggled uh, the rest of the game trying to score baskets. The 50 points the Trojans scored was their lowest total this season, but it wasn't just missing shots that cost the team. All right, we just got to take care of the ball better. I mean, we got to get the loose balls. That, I mean, they got every loose ball tonight. There was balls on the floor we didn't die for. I mean, there's a lot of things that we didn't do that we've been doing all week in practice. So in order to win close games like that, you got to you got to get those 50-50 balls that they got all of them. We didn't get any of them. So, I mean, they beat us on the offensive glass. They, they just outplayed us tonight. They outhustled us. They did everything better than us tonight. Troy's record now sits at 7-14 and 14 and 2-8 and eight in the Sun Belt. And for these players, they know they've got to step it up to get back on the right track. we got to get better every game. And I feel like we do that some games. Some games, we, I think we regress by doing little things when we're not doing things we should. I've never experienced anything like this. This is like the toughest like season individual I've ever had, like, you know, 7 and what, 14. Um, but as a team, you know, we just all, we all like each other. You know, we all hang around each other. That helps it. It helps out, you know, uh, with what's going on on the court, you know, so hopefully sooner or later that turns around. The Trojans will return to action tomorrow night, taking on Louisiana Lafayette. And that game is scheduled for a 7.30 tip-off following the women's game. And of course, the women's team also returned home to face FIU Thursday night, and were looking to pick up their first victory on the home court. However, they were unable to do so, falling to the Golden Panthers 65-41. The Trojans were up by as many as five in the first half and went into halftime only down by one. But FIU took control in the second half. Troy only managed seven points in the final ten minutes of the game. D'Angela Sword continued to lead her team in scoring, totaling 18 points in her 50th career game as a Trojan. Sarah McCappian added ten to score in double digits for the third consecutive game in Sartain Hall. Head coach Mike Murphy says poor shooting proved costly in the game. We really struggled offensively. I thought the first half defensively we really did a good job um, guarding their stuff, uh, rebounding the basketball. Um, offensively we just we missed a lot of really good shots and that's been the, the really frustrating thing for the better part of the season and it's, it's, it's you know we're getting good shots out of our scheme, uh, we're sharing the basketball, uh, we're just not you know getting the thing to go in. The team will hit the court again tomorrow, taking on Louisiana Lafayette. Tip-off for that game is set for 515 as the first game of a doubleheader. And for fans of teams that play on the diamond, the season is quickly approaching. And if you'd like the chance to meet the baseball and softball teams the Trojans will be putting on the diamond this year, the opportunity comes this Sunday. Trojan fans will get the chance to get, come out to Riddle Pace Field for Fan Appreciation Day for the softball and baseball teams. This event was held last year and softball head coach Melanie Davis says it was a success and they're looking for another big turnout. Coach Bobby Pierce introduces his team and I get an opportunity to introduce my girls and um, and then out on the underneath the stands they put out tables where we all give out posters and schedule cards and and last year we had a nice group of fans that came out a lot of the local young kids come out and they get a chance to you know I think it's great for the female athletes to you know, the young ones to have you know to have female role models to to come out and get their their autographs and so it was a great event last year and we hope to build on that the baseball and softball fan appreciation day will begin at 2 Sunday at Riddle Pace Field and of course, another pretty popular event will be taking place on Sunday a little later in the afternoon. You might have even heard of it, the Super Bowl. A trio of Trojans, including Lawrence Tynes, OCU Manura, and Jarrell Jernigan will be playing in the NFL's biggest game. And head coach Larry Blakeney says he's proud of those guys' hard work. That's three great kids. All of them got degrees. All of them are smart. All of them work. All of them know how to overcome injury. And that's the reason they're there. There ain't no dummies in the NFL. I mean, there may be a few. But they're, if, they're, if, they're, if, they're not, if they're not the smartest guys in the world and they're spewing all the time, they're super athletes. These guys, these guys right here know how to act and conduct themselves for the most part. And, uh, and they do a, the reason they're there is because they're smart and they're tough. The Trojan Trio's chance to shine comes Sunday night on the NFL's biggest stage. Kickoff for Super Bowl 46 is set for 5.30 Sunday. So, Christina, Courtney, the basketball teams weren't able to pick up a win, but better luck to them as they go out uh, tomorrow night to play Louisiana Lafayette. And, of course, to stay up to date on everything Trojan Sports, be sure to tune in to Trojan Sports now tonight at 7 and 11 to uh, learn about all the stuff that's going on. And we'll have an interview with the softball coach, uh, Melanie Davis. So, lots to tune in to, so be sure to check it out. Thanks for keeping us orderly with all the things that we have going on in <laughs> Trojan Sports. Thanks. Thank Still you. to come on Trojan 
Still to come, Troy University's Jazz Ensemble is performing a concert next week to promote the release of their new CD. Plus, we saw more of those showers today, but the temps weren't so bad. What's up for the weekend, Tiffany? That's right, Courtney. We did see some fairly comfortable weather other than the rain. I'll let you know if you can put those rain boots away for the weekend next in weather. Children eat well and move a lot, and move a lot, and move a lot, eat well and move a lot. 60 minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. So keep them active and eating well every day. Skip a rope Saturday, freeze tag Friday, tap dance Thursday. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. From the high definition digital production studios of Troy University, you're watching the award winning Troy Trojan Mission Nightly News. And now Tiffany Lester joins with a look at weather. Well, Tiffany, it seems that we've experienced all type of weather this week. Um, it's been sunny, cloudy, rainy. What can we expect for the rest of the weekend? It's true. It has been a, a weather roller coaster in our area, and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. We should be seeing more rain as we go into the weekend, so that's not very good, but I'll, I'll get into that later, as I said. First, let's take a look at our Trojan Region Campus Snapshot, where we see that it is, it is getting dark out there. Um, as as it is the time of year where it gets dark at about 5.15. Um, it was very cloudy and it rained a little bit earlier today, as you can see from the, the skies. Um, the skies are rainy, as I said. Temperature is 63, dew point 52 degrees. Humidity 68%. Barometer at 30 and 24, but it's steady. Winds coming from the east at 5 miles per hour. For today's statistics, we see the high was 65, uh, the low is 55. It says zero rain, but we have been seeing rain off and on all throughout the day. The sun rose at 6.35 and will set at 5.20. As we take a look at those temperatures from around the state, we see that um, we're just in the low to upper 60s all throughout um, Alabama, Huntsville, Montgomery, and Birmingham, all with 60 degrees. Mostly rainy um, here or there with Phoenix City and Dothan being in Mobile with the highest at 66 and 67. Current temperatures throughout the southeast, as I said, Florida is seeing those low 70s, even the high 70s in Miami. And as you get into the Carolinas, you see 50 degrees, Nashville, Tennessee, Birmingham, 58. As we take a look at temperatures across the United States, we're seeing those 40 degrees, even freezing temperatures um, up in the northern portion of the United States. And for our current service map, just high pressure systems here or there um, in our area, this low pressure system bringing in that rain um, later on. As you can see, Alabama and Georgia are seeing those, um, or Mississippi, are seeing those rainy, rainy conditions. As I said, we'll be seeing that for the next 48 hours. Heavier rain up north, but it will be coming into our area later on. The thunderstorm severe, not much in our area, but it is coming through all across Louisiana. It's just bringing that into our area with that low pressure system. For um, tonight, early evening, just those high pressure systems, and the rain is coming towards us, as I said, and for tomorrow, we w the whole southeast portion, other than Florida, will be seeing a lot of rain here or there. And Sunday, we should be seeing that rain continue. For tonight's forecast, as I said, early showers, about 40% chance. Winds coming at 7 miles per hour from the east-southeast with a low of 55. And tomorrow, it will be mostly cloudy with isolated thunderstorms. 30% chance of rain there, south-southeast winds at 9 miles per hour, but the high will be 76, so that should be fairly comfortable. And for the four-day forecast we see, on Saturday, it is a 30% chance of rain. Those thunderstorms high of 76. The, um, the Sunday, it is also raining, but the high is 71. Um, Monday, mostly cloudy, and Tuesday, also mostly cloudy, but there is about a 40% chance of rain here or there, with the lows being in the high 50s going all the way down to the low 40s. So, Christina and um, Courtney, we will be seeing a lot of rain this weekend, 
going into next week, it should be fairly comfortable. Hopefully, the temperature should be high in the 70s, so that, that may cause a real muggy, muggy weather in our area. Well, um, I'll be sure to just have my rain boots oh, and yeah. my raincoat for this weekend. Be prepared. Okay. Thank you.